In 2013, the US Defense Department released documents that described a nuclear bomb accident hidden from the world for decades. The incident dates back to January 24, 1961, when a US B-52 bomber plane was carrying not one, but two nuclear bombs and was passing through the Goldsboro city of North Carolina. As B-52 was scheduled for a mid-air refueling, the tanker aircraft arrived around midnight for the task. However, the moment they were about to hook up the B-52, the crew was baffled to notice a severe fault in the aircraft. The tanker crew immediately advised B-52 commander Walter Scott about a fuel leak in the right wing. Before the commander could safely land the aircraft in a nearby location within three minutes, the majority of its fuel was lost. After reaching three kilometers, the pilots lost control and had no other option than to order the crew to eject from the aircraft, leading to a catastrophic crash. Sadly, three crew members lost their lives. But what about the nuclear weapons that were twice as powerful as the bomb that decimated Hiroshima? Surprisingly, the first one landed intact with a parachute. The only reason why it did not explode is that it suffered a technical error despite completing its 42 second timer, and the other one landed on the land so fast that it could not complete its 42 second timer. This means if the first bomb did not have a technical error, then the entire North Carolina might not be on the map today. Moreover, weapon number two could have still detonated any second before the engineers took necessary action. As Lieutenant Freville and his team dug deep to retrieve the buried bomb, they stumbled upon a terrific revelation. The arm safe switch was not set to save, but arm. The situation was a ticking time bomb itself. Although the Department of Defense initially claimed that the bombs were unarmed and couldn't accidentally explode, a declassified report revealed that a single switch could have triggered an unthinkable catastrophe. The bomb still lies buried about 50 meters beneath the field, sealed off by a massive concrete slab. The Pentagon assures us that there's no detectable radiation or hazard in the area, yet a portion of one weapon containing uranium remains unaccounted for. In this case, no one planned on using nuclear weapons intentionally. However, that cannot be said about the case of the Soviet submarine. This incident happened on October 27, 1962, when the United States Navy detected a Soviet submarine called B-59 armed with a nuclear-armed missile near Cuba. The objective of this submarine was to ensure that the Soviet Union could immediately respond to the US after they deployed their nuclear missiles in Italy and Turkey. Moreover, B-59 was directed to stay hidden from the US Navy. However, when the US detected B-59, the Soviet crew decided to take the vessel so deep that no technology could detect their presence. But this is where the situation got worse, as they lost contact with the Soviet government, Captain Valentin Savitsky, in charge of B-59, started to believe that the war had finally begun and his submarine was under attack by US anti-submarine forces. With panic setting in, Savitsky gave orders to fire T-5 nuclear torpedo at US ships. The world stood on the brink of nuclear war, and the fate of millions hung by a thread. The moment the crew was about to press the button, Vasily Arkhipov, the submarine's brigade's chief of staff, who was also captain's rank, aborted this launch. Instead of blindly following orders, Arkhipov convinced Savitsky to take the submarine back to the surface and wait for orders from Moscow. When B-59 were surfaced on the water, they were ordered by the Soviet Union to set the course back to the country. However, in this other case, the Soviet Union had no choice but to respond to the attack with nuclear weapons. It was September 26, 1983, and Lieutenant Colonel Stanislav Petrov from the Soviet Air Defense Forces was an officer in charge of a bunker near Moscow. Inside this bunker, Petrov was operating an early warning system by the name of OKO, where he was tasked to notify the superiors of any oncoming nuclear missiles so that an immediate nuclear counterattack could be executed. As it was the peak of the Cold War era, Petrov was continuously looking for an attack from the US. Still, no such threat was witnessed. But what Petrov was about to experience was going to shake the entire world. At midnight, OKO suddenly reported about a group of nuclear missiles heading straight toward the Soviet Union, and the radar screen showed the word launch. 
in order to get ready to fire back their own nukes. At first, Petrov thought of immediately warning his superiors, but before he could do that, he remembered that he was told during his training that an attack from the US would consist of hundreds of missiles. So, five oncoming missiles seemed like an error in the system. Still, Petrov was bound to confirm the attack, because a tiny mistake could have destroyed the entire Moscow. A few moments later, Petrov contacted a Soviet satellite about any missiles heading towards their country. However, it was confirmed that the system mistakenly issued a false alarm after considering the rare appearance of sunlight in high-altitude clouds as missiles. This makes us wonder what could have happened if Petrov had not double-checked the warning that day. Fortunately, the event did not cause such a stir at the time. But the next incident forced the American president to hold an emergency meeting. In October 1962, US President John F. Kennedy held an emergency meeting with the National Security Council after their spy plane witnessed Soviet nuclear missiles in Cuba. As the nuclear missiles were just 140 kilometers away from Florida, Kennedy had to immediately decide whether to launch a full-scale invasion of Cuba or adopt a series of negotiations with the Soviet Union. The reason why the Soviet Union placed their nuclear missiles in Cuba was in response to the Jupiter nuclear missiles that were positioned by the US government in Italy and Turkey. Moreover, Cuba needed the support of the Soviet Union after it received intel that the US was planning to invade and take over Cuba. But before the situation could get any worse, Kennedy decided to adopt a less aggressive approach by adopting a naval blockade so that no nuclear weapons could reach Cuba from the Soviet Union. Although this approach prevented any nuclear escalation, the Soviet Union became furious with Kennedy. Luckily, after a series of negotiations, the US and the Soviet Union removed their nuclear missiles from each country and a Moscow-Washington hotline was established. Where such a positive ending did not already occur was in the Philippine Sea. On December 5, 1965, Lieutenant Douglas Webster was aboard a Douglas A4E Skyhawk carrying nuclear bomb. While the aircraft was on the edge of the aircraft carrier, it was being lifted by an elevator to the launch pad. However, the aircraft carrier turned slightly and the A4E began to slide seaward. The crew on the ship immediately ordered Lieutenant Douglas to start braking, but it was too late. The plane was going down. Lieutenant Douglas, along with the plane and the nuclear bomb, were never seen again. It wasn't until 1989, over two decades later, that the United States Department of Defense revealed that this massive nuclear bomb was resting silently on the ocean floor just a little over 96 kilometers from Japan's shores. Surprisingly, as of today, the aircraft, pilot, and the nuclear bomb were never discovered. However, where the bombs were found was over Spanish Almeria. As with the first story, it was again an in-flight refueling, but this time it was much worse. On January 17, 1966, around 10.30 am, a US B-52G bomber plane was scheduled for mid-air refueling above Almeria, Spain. For some reason, during a mid-air refueling operation, chaos erupted. As the refueling tanker tried to link up with the B-52G, both aircraft lost balance and collided with each other, killing all the crew members on board. But the actual danger began after the crash, because US B-52G was carrying not one, but four nuclear bombs. And the moment it collided with the tanker aircraft, three of them dropped over the Palomares region of Spain and the fourth one fell into the Mediterranean Sea. The bombs contaminated a vast 2.6 km square stretch of the Spanish coastline with radioactive material. Although the fourth one was recovered from the sea, the Spanish government forever banned US flights from carrying such weapons over its airspace. To top it all off, the US government paid $2 million for the cleanup, but even today, radioactive elements of those bombs are found in the soil. Despite this incident being very unfortunate, it could have definitely ended way worse. Consider subscribing to this channel, and I'll see you next time.